Hey everyone, Damien the Kung Fit Coach here. Today we're going to be looking at a Gombu to Gombu Punch. We're going to cover how this differs from a Marbu to Gombu Punch and also what the application is. The first thing we need to look at is the basic leg movement. So we're going to start in Gombu. One leg bent, one leg straight, both feet flat on the floor, turned out at a slight angle so we're nice and stable. From here we're going to turn back to Marbu, opening the hips and opening out those knees just like we did with the Marbu Gombu punch last week. From here what this allows us to do is drive with this leg and push us round into the opposite Gombu with more power. This differs from our Marbu Gombu punch however because rather than driving our power forward and twisting we're just trying to generate power with the twist. Bear in mind that we're punching out to the side, not in front of us. So we don't want to drive our power forwards, we just want to twist round so we can get our power heading in that direction. This means that we don't need to drive with the leg quite so much to get the power. We actually want to spin with as much speed as possible whilst keeping our body centered. It's the momentum from this spin that builds our power. So we don't need to worry about our Marbu being perfect. It's better that that transition is smooth and fast. Make sure you don't just spin on your feet though. Use the transition between your stances to engage your hips and waist and to drive through into the spin. Looking at our upper body, we want to finish with our hips and our shoulders completely square. And we're gonna be facing full 180 degrees away from where we started. Our punching arm, which is going to be the same as the rear straight leg, is going to extend out in a nice straight line. And it's going to be a line from the fist all the way through both shoulders, making a nice strong structure. When we actually throw the punch, our hips and our shoulders finish turning just before our punch lands. Although you're punching to the side, we're going to pull the fist back to the waist with the elbow pointing behind us rather than directly away from the punch. This helps pull us round, creating more power, but unlike our Marbu and Gombu punches, which are analogous to jabs and crosses, we're not trying to pull one side of the body further back to drive the other forward. Because we're punching with the arm in line with the shoulders, if we tried to pull one shoulder back, we'd be pulling the other back as well and making ourselves further away from our target rather than closer to it. In this way, this punch is actually closer to a lead hook in terms of body mechanics, but with the arm out straight. It's the front hip closing which is generating the power here, not the opening of the hips or the closing of the rear hip. So why are we using hook-like mechanics with a straight punch? When it's applied, does this not just end up being a rubbish jab? The answer lies in angles. It's easy to get stuck in the idea that you're always facing your opponent but a real fight just isn't like that. You might be facing multiple attackers, your attacker might dodge your attack and come off of your center line. At this point, maybe you wanna use a straight punch because of the range it has, but you don't have the opportunity to move. Here, this gombu to gombu technique becomes really useful. The other application for this technique is it takes the idea of pulling your opponent onto your strike, which is often proposed for marbu and gombu punches, and it makes it more effective. If we're pulling with our front arm, as we would with a gombu strike, we've got a limited range of motion. That means that we can only generate so much power. We're also pulling our opponent to our outside, which not only gives us fewer opportunities to get our strike in, but it also means that if we miss, we're a lot more vulnerable because they're coming into this position. Now, if we pull with the rear hand, we've got more range of motion, which means we've got more power in that pull, also, because they're coming to our inside, we're a lot safer, they're not gonna take our back, and we've got a lot more opportunities to strike them because we can hit them all the way through here, rather than in this more limited range if we're pulling to our outside. Now, reaching out and grabbing your opponent at range isn't an easy thing to do, and it's not something you necessarily want to go looking for when you're in a fight. But sometimes a situation will emerge where You've got that opportunity or it happens accidentally and then you can use this technique to good effect. You can also use it when you're in closer. If you're kind of in grappling distance, you're right next to each other, 
you can use the pull to get someone into a better position for you, but also actually you can open up space by pulling them and that can give you the room to generate power you need for a good hard strike. You should now understand how to use the gombu to gombu punch, how it differs from the marbu to gombu punch, and have some ideas on how to use it as well. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you give that like button, good hard marbu punch, and let me know down in the comments what other techniques you'd like to see videos on. I'll see you in the next one.